On the east coast of Sicily, Mount Etna has shifted abruptly from routine activity into something far more serious, and the speed of that change is what has alarmed scientists. In the final days of December 2025, Etna erupted forcefully, sending lava jets rising roughly 200 meters into the air and opening a new eruptive vent inside the Voragine crater. According to Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, the transition from relative calm to sustained explosive activity unfolded in less than 72 hours, a pace that leaves little margin for response when conditions escalate this quickly. The eruption quickly pushed authorities to raise alert levels as a dense ash plume climbed to approximately 4,900 meters above sea level high enough to disrupt aviation and spread ash across neighboring communities. Ashfall was reported in multiple towns downwind, while continuous volcanic tremor signaled that magma was still moving upward from depth. Etna rises 3,369 meters above sea level and dominates eastern Sicily, and its slopes are not remote terrain. Roughly 1 million people live on or around the volcano, according to Italian civil protection data, many of them in areas historically affected by lava flows and ash clouds. Last month, we examined signs that Mount Etna was slowly shifting with parts of its massive flank moving centimeters per year toward the sea, a signal of long-term structural stress measured by satellite and ground instruments. That was not a forecast of eruption, but a warning that the system beneath Etna was active and changing. Now with Etna erupting again, not as a prediction fulfilled, but as evidence that this volcano does not operate through isolated events. Its hazards unfold in layers, often overlapping and rarely in isolation. Etna's entire southeastern flank is creeping downslope by two to three centimeters per year. An unstoppable gravitational drift that's literally carrying part of the island into the ocean. What has unsettled researchers most is how coordinated the signals have been. Seismic tremor remains elevated, ground deformation continues, and thermal imaging confirms sustained heat near the summit vents, all indicators that fresh magma is still being supplied. As monitoring teams track these developments in real time, one question now hangs over Sicily and beyond. Is this eruption already nearing its peak? Or is Mount Etna only entering a phase that could become far more dangerous in the days ahead? Mount Etna's sudden escalation makes sense once you understand how this volcano was built and why it reacts so quickly. Etna sits where the African plate pushes beneath the edge of the Eurasian plate, and that slow collision melts rock deep underground, creating magma that is rich in gas. Gas is the danger factor here because when magma traps gas, Instead of releasing it gradually, pressure builds like steam inside a sealed boiler. And when a pathway opens, the release can be violent rather than gentle. According to INGV volcanologists, this gas-rich magma is what allows Etna to switch from calm degassing to explosive lava fountains in a very short time. As magma rises, it forces its way through fractures inside the mountain, and that movement produces signals scientists watch closely. One of those signals is volcanic tremor, a continuous vibration that acts like the hum of a machine running underground, telling researchers that magma is actively flowing rather than stalled. During this eruption, tremor levels increased sharply and stayed elevated, indicating that magma was being supplied continuously instead of draining away after the first outburst, increasing the likelihood of sustained or renewed eruptive activity. Ground deformation instruments also detected measurable swelling near the summit, meaning the volcano physically expanded by small but significant amounts as magma pushed upward. Heat data adds another layer to the picture. Thermal cameras recorded intense heat concentrated around the Voragine vent, confirming that fresh magma is reaching the surface and not simply reheating old material. At the same time, gas sensors measured increased sulfur dioxide output, a key indicator that magma is rising from depth rather than cooling below the surface. These combined signals suggest the system is not winding down yet, but reorganizing itself in real time. This is why scientists are cautious about assuming the eruption is already past its most dangerous phase. Etna's plumbing allows magma to shift between vents, open new pathways, or intensify existing ones with little warning, and history shows that when these signals align, Etna's history shows the eruption is often not ending, but repositioning itself for what comes next. 
Mount Etna's current eruption feels alarming because this volcano has a long record of turning escalation into impact, and the numbers from past events show how quickly conditions can deteriorate. In 1669, Etna produced one of the most destructive eruptions in European history, with lava flows traveling more than 15 kilometers, destroying at least 14 villages and reaching the walls of Catania after burying thousands of homes. Contemporary records estimate that tens of thousands of people were displaced and vast areas of farmland were permanently altered, a reminder that Etna's greatest damage often comes from persistent lava rather than a single explosive moment as documented by Italian historical archives and modern reconstructions. More recent eruptions show that modern infrastructure does not guarantee safety. In 1991 to 1993, Etna erupted continuously for 473 days, producing lava flows that threatened the town of Zafirana at Nea and destroyed roads, buildings, and agricultural land, forcing repeated evacuations. Emergency crews were deployed for months to divert lava using barriers and earthworks, an effort that protected some areas but also revealed how difficult it is to control an eruption once lava is established on the slopes. According to INGV assessments, millions of euros in damage were recorded during this period, even without a major explosive phase. Air travel has also been repeatedly disrupted by Etna's activity. During eruptions in 2001, 2002, and 2018, ash clouds forced the closure of Catania Airport, stranding tens of thousands of passengers and grounding flights across southern Europe. In the 2002 eruption, ashfall damaged buildings, collapsed roofs under accumulated weight, and affected communities more than 30 kilometers from the summit, showing how Etna's reach extends far beyond lava flow paths. These events are well documented by aviation authorities and volcanic ash advisory centers. This history matters because Etna rarely repeats itself in the same way, but it consistently expands its impact once an eruption is underway. When lava fountains intensify and new vents open, the volcano has a pattern of expanding its impact zone, and with dense populations, active airports, and critical infrastructure now closer than ever, the question becomes unavoidable. If Etna has already surprised scientists once during this eruption, how much more could it still deliver? Scientists monitoring Mount Etna are now less focused on what has already erupted and more on what the volcano may do next, because ongoing data shows the system is still being actively supplied with magma. According to INGV monitoring data, volcanic tremor remains elevated and ground deformation is not fully relaxed, meaning pressure is still present beneath the summit rather than dissipating after the initial phase. This matters because Etna's eruptions often evolve in stages, with lava fountains giving way to new vents, shifting flow paths, or renewed explosive bursts days or even weeks later, a pattern repeatedly observed in past events documented by the Smithsonian Global Volcanism program. The human stakes are significant. Around 1 million people live on Etna's slopes and surrounding lowlands, and key infrastructure sits directly in potential hazard zones. Italian civil protection authorities note that lava flows threaten roads, power lines, and water networks, while ash fall can impact towns far from the summit and force repeated airport closures. During similar past eruptions, Catania Airport was shut for days at a time, disrupting travel for tens of thousands and causing widespread economic losses, and aviation officials warned that renewed ash emissions could again affect airspace across the central Mediterranean. What makes this eruption especially unsettling is how quickly it intensified. Etna moved from relative calm to high lava fountains in less than 72 hours, and scientists acknowledge that forecasting the next shift is far harder than identifying that the system is active. Monitoring networks can track magma movement, gas release, and surface change in real time, but they cannot guarantee long lead times if conditions escalate suddenly. As Etna continues to erupt and instruments record ongoing movement beneath the volcano, the final question facing Sicily and beyond grows increasingly uncomfortable. If this eruption has already accelerated faster than expected, how much warning would anyone have before Etna delivers its next surprise?